Good evening, anti sheeple pleaser family. This is M, the anti sheeple pleaser Mitchell. Please excuse my voice. I live in Georgia, and the weather here is crazy. Like, pollen is everywhere, and my sinuses were not prepared for this crap. I mean, the weather in Georgia is so unpredictable. I mean, <laughs> I'm tempted to call Mother Nature and write a grievance. I mean, because this is just ridiculous. It's, it's horrible. It's terrible. A couple of days ago, it was freezing outside and raided, and now it's, it's, it's hot. Like, you could go skip it in shorts or something. So I, I don't know what to do with myself. So I'm going to take myself a spiritual bath and um, just chill out, take in some liquids and just chill out. Um, anyhow, now that that's taken care of, I will be basically having the computer voice, of course, do the story for Princess Diana. Um, I promise you guys I'll be here Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, rain, sleet, or snow. So I'm not dead. My sinuses are just drained. So I'm here. I'm here. Um, please enjoy the podcast. Uh, feel free to leave your comments, um, your thumbs up, your thumbs down, whatever have you. Peace, love, and blessings. Um, shout out to all my subs. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Just take some time. Hit the little button. Subscribe. Um, if you don't like the video, hit the thumbs down. That's pretty self-explanatory. If you do, hit the thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. You know, you like it or you do like it and you want to talk some shit, good or bad, feel free to leave your comment. And like I said, please excuse my voice. Um, I am, my sinuses are draining. Like, yeah, I just feel, I feel really kind of like horrible, just a little, <laughs> like really kind of like down. But um, anyhow, should be done by the end of the day. Uh, my husband's taking care of me, so hopefully I should be able to make it through this uh, small time of being buried in pollen in Georgia. This is disgusting. Georgia, you should be ashamed of yourself. Anyhow, enjoy the podcast. A very long document about the parasitic murdering reptiles known as the royal family of England and what Princess Diana discovered about them. Some people may find this totally unbelievable and shocking. There have also been questions about whether Diana is even buried on the island. In the summer of 1998, the Star magazine in the United States quoted an unnamed senior source at Buckingham Palace as saying she was secretly cremated and according to a report in the Los Angeles Times some people in the village of Great Brington also don't believe she is buried on the island. I know these reports are true from my own sources. One resident quoted by the LA Times said that the night her coffin was taken to Althorpe for burial, the village had been invaded by the army, police, and special forces units, and all the villagers were hustled into their homes. She said that the crematorium at the church was working late into the night. Betty Andrews, the former cook and housekeeper at Althorpe, is quoted by Star Magazine as saying, there's a strange feeling amongst the villagers that we may not be hearing the complete picture. While researching this book I was introduced to Christine Fitzgerald, a brilliant and gifted healer, who was a close friend and confidant of Diana for nine years. Because of Christine's understanding of the esoteric, Diana was able to talk to her about matters she would not dare to share with anyone else for fear of being dubbed crazy. It is clear that Diana knew about the true nature of the royal family's genetic history and the reptilian control. Her nicknames for the Windsors were the lizards and the reptiles and she used to say in all seriousness, they're not human. There is a very good reason for Diana using this description of the Windsors. As her deprogramming continued, Arizona Wilder remembered clearly a ritual she attended at Clarence House, the Queen Mother's home near to Buckingham Palace in which Diana was shown who the Windsors really are. It took place in the first seven days of July 1981, just before Diana and Charles were married on the 29th. This period is the last seven days of the cycle of the oak tree, according to esoteric law, and the ritual was called the Awakening of the Bride. This is a ritual for all females of the 13 bloodlines who are going to be in publicly high positions and marry reptilians to produce the new generation of rulers. Arizona says that the Queen Mother, the Queen, Prince Philip, Lady Fermoy, Diana's father Earl Spencer, Prince Charles, and Camilla Parker Bowles were all present when Diana was brought into the room. She was wearing a white gown and a drug had been administered by Lady Fermoy. 
Diana was told that she should consider her union with Prince Charles as only a means to produce heirs and nothing else. Camilla Parker Bowles was his consort, not her. Arizona says that Prince Philip and the Queen Mother then shapeshifted into reptiles to show Diana who they really were. Diana was terrified, but quiet, she said. Diana was told that if she ever revealed the truth about them, she would be killed. Remember the guy I mentioned who had a call from Diana in the March before she died asking for his advice on how to reveal information about the royals that would shake the world? The Queen Mother told Diana at the ritual that all ears would be listening to everything she said and all eyes would forever be watching her. This is the classic nowhere to run bind imposed on all mind controlled slaves. Does anyone believe, therefore, that they would allow Diana into the clutches of Mohammed al Fate if he was not under their control? The ritual also involved the use of a golden penis, Osiris symbolism, which was used on Diana to signify the opening of the womb. Arizona says it was of reptilian shape and size and had needle like protrusions designed to superficially puncture the walls of the vagina and cause bleeding. Diana was told that after this ritual, she would never be honored again by attending their rituals and she was not to ask questions about them. Now do people understand why Diana suffered from bulimia and serious emotional problems from the time she married Charles? Diana told Christine Fitzgerald that the Queen Mother was the power behind the Windsors, along with Prince Philip. But Philip was subordinate in the hierarchy to the Queen Mother, Diana said. The Queen Mother is connected to a long list of brotherhood groups and societies and she is the head of the Inner Temple, the elite and highly secret society for the upper levels of the legal profession on the former Knights Templar land at Temple Bar in London. It was the Queen Mother and her close friend, Diana's grandmother, Ruth Lady Fermoy, who manipulated Diana into the marriage with Prince Charles. This is why Diana was given quarters at the Queen Mother's home. Clarence House, in the weeks before the wedding and she left from there to marry Charles at St. Paul's Cathedral. Diana used to tell me that the Queen Mother was evil, Christine Fitzgerald said, she actually used that word, evil. She said she hated the Queen Mother and the Queen Mother hated her. Most people in Britain will be astonished to read this because the Queen Mother's propaganda has turned her into the nation's favorite grandmother. Oh yes. The Queen Mum, such a lovely, gentle, kind old lady. But this woman is not what she is claimed to be. I can't emphasize that enough. During her time at Clarence House before the wedding, Diana says herself that she was being given drugs like the antidepressant, Valium, to treat her bulimia. And what else were they giving her? They drugged her, Christine said I'm sure of it, they had her doped from the start. Christine had many conversations with Diana and she opened her heart about her nightmare life with the Windsors. But Christine's contacts through her work have given her access to other sources with inside knowledge of the British royal family, too. This was the first time Christine Fitzgerald had talked publicly about her experiences with Diana and what she knows of the reptilian agenda. She told me. The Queen Mother, now that's a serious piece of wizardry. The Queen Mother is a lot older than people think. To be honest, the royal family hasn't died for a long time, they have just metamorphosed. It's sort of cloning, but in a different way. They take pieces of flesh and rebuild the body from one little bit. Because it's lizard, because it's cold-blooded, it's much easier for them to do Frankenstein's than it is for us. The different bodies are just different electrical vibrations and they have got that secret, they've got the secret of the microcurrents, it's so micro, so specific, these radio waves that actually create the bodies. These are the energies I work with when I'm healing. They know the vibration of life and because they are cold-blooded, they are reptiles, they have no wish to make the earth the perfect harmony it could be, or to heal the earth from the damage that's been done. The Earth's been attacked for zones by different extraterrestrials. It's been like a football for so long. This place was a bus stop for many different aliens. All these aliens, they could cope with everything, 
including the noxious gases. They're landing all the time and coming up from the bowels of the earth. They looked like reptiles originally, but they look like us when they get out now through the electrical vibration, that life key I talked about. They can manifest how they want to. All the real knowledge has been taken out and shredded and put back in another way. The Queen Mother is chief toad of this part of Europe and they have people like her in each continent. Most people, the hangers-on, don't know, you know, about the reptiles. They are just in awe of these people because they are so powerful. Bal Moral is a very, very nasty place. That's somewhere they want to dig underground. They will find reptile fossils, it goes back that far. Don't think of people like the Queen Mother and Queen Victoria, as different people. Think of them as the same person which after a while has had to replace their coat. When the flesh dies, that energy, while it's dying, will be immediately up someone else's jacksy, backside. It's very vampire, worse than vampire. They are not going to come to you with hooked teeth and suck your blood. Fear is their food, they can actually take fear and manifest it into a tangible thing. The key is the vibrational current. At that vibrational current, they can manifest anything from anything. It's like a holographic image. We are all minerals and water vibrating. This is all an illusion we are living in. That's the secret. You know when the monarchy's fallen, it's not the end of it. They will manifest in another form. The reptiles have never been defeated and this is the closest they have come to it. The reason they are so threatened today is because the earth is in such trouble and the mental power of people is returning. This is their most frightening time, but this is not going to kill them. There are long centuries before it's over yet. The difference this time is that it'll be more difficult for them and they are going to have to settle for less and the earth people are going to get more. But even though these reptilian ones are f, they are sad, pathetic beasts really, while humanity is galloping towards light. They're just pathetic lumps of nastiness who aren't going to win. I can't talk about this everywhere because they would just go Christine, get a white coat, put it on backwards, get out. But I want an end to the bee. I was astonished to hear someone else talking about these subjects, which I knew from my own research to be true. She was not aware when she told me this of my own research into reptilians. Christine Fitzgerald, thanks to her insider contacts and her knowledge of metaphysics, had been able to grasp the biggest secret, that reptiles on another dimension are controlling the world by working through physical bodies which look human and also that the Windsors are one of these reptilian bloodlines. Christine also knew about the reptile satanic rituals, the sexual rites and the widespread sacrifice of children. She said it is the pure essence of the prepubescent the reptiles want. If you looked at where all the castles are built and where there are a lot of street children in the third world, they're galloping it at the moment. They're pulling the kids in and massay now. She said the reptiles want the children's life essence because they can't continue to manifest without that pure energy. The contaminated essence of us adults is not worth anything to them, she said. All the rituals, the knives, and sodomy, it's that easy for these people to snatch a piece of your soul. Christine also spoke about the sex rituals and orgies involving the Windsors. The very word orgy comes from the Greek, orgia meaning secret worship and relates to the sexual rites of the ancient mystery religions. Christine said, There used to be an elect circle who took part in ritual orgies at Buckingham Palace. This was told to me by one of the participants. They were all couples. The lights used to go out at a certain time and they all swapped round and did their things. You know about the butler ringing the bell at six o'clock in the morning so that everyone goes back to their bed? These people are nasty pieces of work, sweetheart, these people are nasty. Nothing you can think of can ever be as nasty as they really are. Diana used to say that if the world knew what they were really like, they wouldn't want them, but I knew that. My chin was on the couch now, hearing about all these orgies at the palace. 
just the laugh that these serious people who are going on like butter wouldn't melt up their jacksy and they are carrying on like that. But the sex thing is a big part of their rituals because it's kundalini energy, C, which is the core, our generator. The orgies stopped because one of the couples died and they had an odd number and they didn't want to bring in anyone else. So even that was ritual. Everything about them is ritual, all that heraldry, all that pomp and ceremony. Negative energy gets drawn to negative energy. Many of the Queen's ladies-in-waiting have told Christine Fitzgerald about Prince Philip and his affairs. The royal family has got lots of black babies all over the world, she says. The recovered mind slave Bryce Taylor tells in her book, Thanks for the Memories, how she was forced to have sex with Philip and Charles. It is not without reason that the former British intelligence officer, Peter Wright, said in his controversial book, Spycatcher, that the palace had enjoyed several centuries of scandal burying. Christine said that another controversial book, The Royals, by the American author Kitty Kelly was true, but she's left out a lot of stuff, she's been quite kind. She's not kidding as you will soon appreciate. Christine told me about other members of the royal clan including Prince Philip's uncle, Lord Mountbatten, another Satanist. She said. Lord Mountbatten was a big S, too. It was him who f up Charles and got him on the nasty road. So this is the family which hooked an unsuspecting 19-year-old and used her, in Diana's words, as a brood mare to produce Windsor heirs with Spencer genes. But it was more than that. Much more. Only a few weeks before this book went to press, and months after Christine gave me her information in England, I was contacted by a friend in the United States who was deprogramming a very high-level mind-controlled slave from Project Monarch. He believes her to be the highest-ranked woman in the satanic hierarchy in the United States and she was one of only three mother goddesses in the world. At the time my friend in Arizona had no idea what Christine Fitzgerald had said. Arizona had been programmed and trained since childhood to become a mother goddess who conducted satanic rituals at the highest levels of the brotherhood all over the world. She described to my friend the inside of many secret and underground facilities that he has personally seen. What she described was accurate every time. He also checked her story with other contacts and the truth of her memories was continually confirmed. What she told my friend and later told me on audio and videotape, supports the information supplied by other slaves and by Christine Fitzgerald about the Windsors and their true nature. Arizona said that she officiated at satanic rituals at Glamis Castle in Tayside, Scotland, the childhood home of the Queen Mother, who still owns the property, and also at Balmoral, the Queen's Scottish residence. The Brotherhood obsession with Scotland, she said, was because there are many entrances there into the inner earth where the physical reptilians live. Glamis Castle is built on the site of an 11th century royal hunting lodge and the present building dates from around 1687. It is mentioned in the Shakespeare story of Macbeth. Arizona said that the Queen, Prince Philip, Prince Charles and Princess Anne are present at the rituals and so is Charles's girlfriend, Camilla Parker Bowles. Doesn't it all now start to make sense? She said that during the sacrificial rituals the queen wears a cloak of gold fabric inlaid with rubies and black onyx. The queen and Charles have their own ritual goblets, inlaid with precious stones signifying their Illuminati Brotherhood rank. The mother goddess says that the queen makes cruel remarks about lesser initiates, but is afraid of the man codenamed Pinder, the Marquis de Libos who is higher than her in the satanic hierarchy. This also supports a claim made to me by another recovered slave who said she had seen the queen physically beaten by someone above her in satanic rank. Pinder, apparently, bears a resemblance to Prince Charles and Arizona says that Pinder is Charles's real father. She said that the sacrificial victims used in the rituals at Glamis Castle are mostly under five years of age and the ceremonies are guarded by members of Scotland's Black Watch. 
She also confirmed that Lord Mountbatten was a pedophile and that the Windsors are reptilians in human form. Her interview with me was taped, as were the ones with Christine Fitzgerald, and copies are now at various addresses. The video interview with Arizona is available and details are at the back of the book. I stress that this mother goddess had no idea what Christine Fitzgerald had told me and yet their statements match again and again. Arizona says that Diana definitely knew that the Windsors were shapeshifting reptilians and Diana's comments to Christine Fitzgerald support this. Apparently, reptilians have been seen to shapeshift during sleep. Here is a summary of just some of what Arizona said about the royal family. The Queen Mother, she's cold, 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 a nasty person. None of her cohorts even trusted her. They have named an altar mind control program, after her. They call it the Black Queen. I have seen her sacrifice people. I remember her pushing a knife into someone's rectum the night that two boys were sacrificed. One was 13 and the other 18. You need to forget that the Queen Mother appears to be a frail old woman. When she shapeshifts into a reptilian she becomes very tall and strong. Some of them are so strong they can rip out a heart and they all grow by several feet when they shapeshift. Exactly what the lady who saw Edward Heath said, among many others. The Queen, I have seen her sacrifice people and eat their flesh and drink their blood. One time she got so excited with blood lust that she didn't cut the victim's throat from left to right in the normal ritual, she just went crazy stabbing and ripping at the flesh after she'd shapeshifted into a reptilian. When she shapeshifts she has a long reptile face, almost like a beak, and she's an off-white color. The Queen Mother looks basically the same, but there are differences. This description fits many depictions of the gods and bird gods of ancient Egypt and elsewhere. She also has like bumps on her head and her eyes are very frightening. She's very aggressive. Prince Charles, I've seen him shapeshift into a reptilian and do all the things the Queen does. I have seen him sacrifice children. There is a lot of rivalry between them for who gets to eat what part of the body and who gets to absorb the victim's last breath and steal their soul. I have also seen Andrew participate and I have seen Prince Philip and Charles's sister, Anne, at the rituals, but they didn't participate when I was there. When Andrew shapeshifts, he looks more like one of the lizards. The royals are some of the worst, okay, as far as enjoying the killing, enjoying the sacrifice, and eating the flesh, they're some of the worst of all of them. They don't care who sees them at the rituals, they are what they are, they show it outright. They don't care if you see it. Who are you going to tell, who is going to believe you? They feel that it is their birthright and they love it. They love it. Given the evidence I have presented in this chapter about the background to Diana's murder, I was not surprised to hear this mother goddess recall the following about Mohammed al fayd I saw Mohammed al fayd at a ritual at the Mothers of Darkness Castle in Belgium in the 1980s. The Queen and the Queen Mother were also there. The Queen Mother was talking to him and he was looking around as if he didn't believe this sort of thing went on. It was on December 24 at the ritual of the old king and the new king. They didn't let him in to see the worst of it. It was kind of like, let's introduce him into this. But he would have seen a baby being born and introduced as the new king and the sacrifice of an old man. The Queen Mother was there, the Queen, Pinder, Rothschilds a lot of people I don't know and a guy named Tony Blair. He was being groomed because my understanding of it was that people are picked out and groomed for certain positions. And to be considered for those positions you have to accept the reality and the necessity and the sovereignty of the Illuminati, and that the reptilians run the show. Tony Blair's attitude was like I belong here. Dodi Fayed's father seemed bothered by it, but not Tony Blair. I remember seeing him talking to the royals about something. I have seen Blair, Al Fade and the royal family at rituals at Balmoral as well. Once you know this astonishing background, the why, who and how of Diana's murder become crystal clear.
they were all in it together and still are. Diana's murder had been planned for a long time, probably from birth, and it was in the 1980s, around the time Al Fade was at the Mother of Darkness Castle with the royal family and Tony Blair, that the flaming torch symbol was placed on top of the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. Arizona said that Diana was a product of the Multiple Personality Disorder program, which she said would have started before she was five. She said Diana was also three months pregnant when she died. Diana would probably not have known this, she said, because the techniques the Brotherhood use often mean that the women continue to menstruate for some months before they are officially confirmed to be pregnant. Arizona said that when she, herself, was artificially impregnated in a mind-controlled state with Pinder's sperm, she menstruated for three months before she was told by a doctor that she was more than three months pregnant. It could have been Pinder's child and not Dodi Fiat's, Arizona suggested. That is a really powerful sacrifice, she said, to sacrifice a pregnant woman. If Diana was, as appears highly likely, a product of the mind control program, those who plotted her murder could have ensured all that they required to play out their ritual to perfection. She would have accepted the invitation from Al Fade at the right time, fallen for Dodi Fade, agreed to go to Paris for the night and so on. She could also have been, like Arizona, impregnated artificially and have no recollection of it. Arizona says that she knows that Diana was impregnated with Pinder's sperm in this way to conceive her son William the blonde-haired, blue-eyed baby born on the summer solstice. And she is in no doubt that Diana was a multiple. As she said, the things that she did with her eyes, like the eye-rolling, is very, very common in multiples. Sometimes she'd be very shy and then suddenly she's blossoming and she's really social. These are the different altars, programs, coming out, someone's shy, someone's not shy someone's angry, someone's not angry. Then there was the weight gain and the weight loss. The bulimia and the cutting herself are all signs of a multiple. Some are told that if you feel bad about yourself or you remember something, cut yourself. To me it was real obvious with Diana. Someone with this stuff just doesn't announce to the world that something's wrong, they spend their lives trying to hide it. I was out grocery shopping or I was out clothes shopping, I was taking a walk, whatever, but you weren't. The recovered mind slave Bryce Taylor confirms that Diana was a multiple in her book, Thanks for the Memories, and she says that William and Harry are also. I think Dodie was another, thus making it child's play to make he and Diana fall in love. The symbolism of Osiris, Isis, and Horus, in the Pont de Ualma tunnel that night was also confirmed by Arizona. Diana was Isis, Dodi Fade was Osiris, and the child was Horus. I don't think it symbolized the birth of a child so much as the birth of an age the age of Horus which begins by the year 2000. This means the New World Order, the age of Horus, the terrible child. She said that the Foetus would have been divided among certain high-ranking leaders of the Brotherhood slash Illuminati and consumed in ritual. She said that from her long experience of the rituals, she was sure that parts of Diana's body would have been consumed also. Again I ask, is her body even on the island at Althorpe Park? It makes you wonder what Tony Blair and the Royals were doing when they came together at Balmoral immediately after Diana's death. Another part of the ritual was that Diana was blonde-haired and blue-eyed. Kathy O'Brien is the same, so is Arizona although she had dyed her hair to break that spell when I met her. She said that even when the elite sacrifice cats they are blonde-haired and blue-eyed. There is something about that genetic structure which is fundamental to them and this is the blood they need to survive in this dimension. At least most of the monarch slaves have blonde hair and blue eyes. There were no blue eyes on this planet until the extraterrestrials came, Arizona said. Diana told Christine Fitzgerald in 1989 that they were going to kill her. It sounded outlandish at the time, Christine said, because she had the boys and they were little and I thought, no, they need her to bring the boys up. 
but there were to be many indications that Diana was indeed in danger from the Windsors and the Brotherhood in general. In the late 1980s with her marriage nothing more than a public show, Diana was having a relationship with her personal detective, Barry Manneke, but he died in a motorcycle accident in 1988. By 1990, with the Gulf War threatening, Diana was having a relationship with Captain James Hewitt. One day, about this time, she went rushing into Christine's healing centre in London in a terrible state. Christine remembers. She was crying hysterically and I said what's the matter? You know it was dogs died stuff, bottom lip out, full sob. She came galloping through the door. I gave her rescue remedy, clutched her, hugged her, calmed her down, and said now tell me what's going on. I can't believe it, I can't believe it, they killed him, they killed him she sobbed. I said, who did they kill? She told me about her affair with the detective, Barry Manneke, and how he was decapitated on a motorbike and how she thought it was a terrible accident. But now she knows the royal family killed him because Prince Charles's senior detective had just told her that if she didn't cool it with Hewitt, the same would happen to him. He told her she should not think that she was indispensable, either. Thanks for a listening.